Still tracking 4th of July tropical shenanigans for us here in the Southeast. And for my Caribbean folks, looking at you all in the Lesser Antilles, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, my family and friends out there in Puerto Rico, maybe even the Dominican Republic, it might be time, if not getting close to time, to waken up and watching your back. And we're going to be doing the same here in the Weather Center. Welcome back, everybody. Happy Monday. Happy final day of June. June has come and gone. It is June 30th, 2025. I cannot believe how fast this month raced by. We're already on the brink of running right into July. Independence Day for us here in the United States is coming right at us this Friday. And we've got tropical troubles to talk about. I don't want to sound a little, you know, alarming or anything like that, but some big trends, to tell you the truth, at least things, signals that we're going to continue to watch. So I'm not going to waste you all's time. We're going to get right into it. I'm going to bring you just the facts. I'm going to talk about exactly what myself and Weather Center Willow is talking about here and what we're going to be watching as we go through the entirety of the month of July, not only in the short term, but especially for what I think could be a somewhat sporty second half of the month. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your Monday to join me here in the Weather Center. Thank you to all of my new subscribers. Thank you to all my OGs, my day ones out there, sharing my content, liking the videos. Let's give that like button a little nudge if you are just discovering the channel since YouTube is back on our side. Please, it would mean so much for you to click the subscribe button, join the Weather Center community because I do think as we go through July and get closer to the bona fide peak of the hurricane season, we're going to have our work cut out from us, and I'm going to work feverishly round the clock to get you all the information that you need. You can count on it. I can guarantee that, and I can promise you that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Here's National Hurricane Center's homepage. We still have this area of interest with a 20% shot. It does anything over the next seven days. And to tell you the truth, I want to see these percentages nudged upwards just a little bit. I'm not quite saying we need to go 50, 60, 70% with this, but I would like to at least see us getting closer and closer to at least a code orange. I think 20% is just a little low. It might not be communicating what it is we need to communicate, and that is that the 4th of July could very well be a washout. We could possibly have a very sloppy, disorganized area of low pressure on either one of our coastlines here in central Florida. Not expecting anything crazy, and to tell you the truth, my floor scenario for this and what I think, at least for now, is the most likely outcome is probably a potential tropical cyclone. Main reason being is we are right off the coast of a major populated tourist attraction, tourist destination, right in time for the 4th of July holiday. Summer vacation is in full swing. Traffic and tourism, I can tell you through firsthand experience, is through the roof right now. The theme parks, the attractions in Orlando, and the outer lying areas are packed beyond belief. Traffic is absolutely absurd. And we could have some sort of messy tropical disturbance on either one of our sections, east coast, west coast. Some of our models are even indicating two distinct spins, one kind of getting up closer to the mid-Atlantic that starts off the northeast coast of Florida. And then, for example, the UK, which I'll show you, actually has two spins, one off our west and then one off the northeast coast simultaneously. Our other models are kind of picking up on this same trend as well. The Icon and the Euro are showing disorder organized areas of low pressure on both sides of us. And that could possibly be why our models are trending towards weaker iterations altogether because we're kind of borrowing energy. We're borrowing lift, instability, and moisture. And as we all know, tropical cyclones, they don't get along together. They don't play nicely in close proximity to one another. So we'll have to wait and see what shakes out. We're still going to be watching. And I also want to emphasize here going to be watching here very closely as we get into July. I'll show you why here in a moment, so stick with me. Here's a look at Flossie. Let me get my face out of the way. Flossie is a 65-mile-an-hour tropical storm. Central pressure continues to deepen down to 996 millibars and is expected to become a hurricane over the next seven days before dissipating just to the south and west of the Baja California Peninsula, possibly taking a close run at that area. And then you can see another disturbance with the classic O for 30, which I wish National Hurricane Center would do for us here in the Southeast. Just to raise some awareness, 
get some more eyes on the feature that we're going to be tracking in the southeast. Let's head on over to the full disk satellite shot. Right out of the gate, you can see we are still under a fairly active pattern across the eastern United States. Our front that we're going to be tracking is somewhere right in through there, where my little pink dashed line is, supported by a mature low-pressure system currently working its way through the James Hudson Bay area, Quebec and Ontario segments, of Canada. Our ridge is still in place, although there is an upper low kind of trapped underneath it, helping to disturb the flow, create a lot of enhanced weather for us in the southeast. Lots of rain from as far west as New Orleans, Baton Rouge to us here in central Florida, down through the Bahamas, and even into the Turks and Caicos, Cuba, Jamaica getting in on some of the action, as well as the Cayman Islands. This is what's left of now no longer, I should say, post-tropical cyclone Barry short-lived tropical storm that flared up to a 45 mile an hour peak wind in the bay of campeche before making landfall and then flossy is really coming together you can see that system's taking on that textbook look that this thing's going to be intensifying into hurricane status sooner than later the key factor i'm going to be watching for our caribbean friends especially the further east you go for these portions of the islands down through here is going to be a tut tropical upper tropospheric trough that is expected to hang out through this area through much of the first half of July. That's why we might not get any major action here in the greater United States. So we get deeper into the month, but we'll talk about that momentarily. First and foremost, Weather Prediction Center. There's our front by Wednesday. It's going to be hanging out over the Tennessee Valley, the Appalachians getting into the mid-Atlantic Thursday, and then Friday it should plop off somewhere over open water. It's going to be tricky to see where the vorticity decides to fester and bubble up if it does so. Weather Prediction Center, you can see just to the left-hand side of my head here on screen, does have an area of low pressure off the west coast, and that seems to be the bias unless you are the Euro. The Euro and the AI model keep it off our east coast. I'll show you the latest 12Z data. If we start off looking off the southeast, there it is. You can see a very sloppy, disorganized area of low pressure begins to develop as we go through the day on Saturday. It does seem like if there is going to be any gradual development of anything, not talking a named storm, but just anything, I want to emphasize that, just anything off the coastline of Florida or the southeast, it'll likely be during Saturday into Sunday. But before that, rainfall and storm coverage is really going to go up for many of us from Louisiana all the way through to the Carolinas, thanks to that trough. You can see the upper low, the mature system, draping back our cold front that's going to be sitting out over open water as we go through the end of this week into the holiday weekend. And then watch this. As that kind of peters out and moves up towards the mid-Atlantic on this model run, look at the MDR. Look at those healthy waves and watch this. This took me by surprise today. We get a little bit of tropical development right there just off to the east of the Windward Islands. And there's some pretty decent support for this. The European AI model has been suggesting this for a while now. There you go, off the southeast. Same song and dance is what the IFS Euro was showing. Very broad area of low pressure. Might not even be a full bonafide closed warm core low. But still some to watch. It's really going to impact our holiday plans. And then look at the MDR. Look at that thing right there. And then another one just back behind it right there. There's one and then there's two. So that's going to be very interesting to watch. I switch you over to the European ensembles. Let me take you full screen so you can get a better look. I'll zoom in post-production as always. First off, we're, we're continuing to go back and forth. We're windshield wiping over the southeast. It's very interesting. Zero Z, sodden uptick in our ensembles. Six Z kind of carried it along. And then 12 Z, kaput. Poof. Only a couple of very weak rogue members. And then you look at the MDR and look at those puppies right there flaring up. Already have a couple of tropical storm signatures out there. Only a couple, but remember, this is 15 days out. For the model to be capturing this from such a distance tells me we need to be watching. We got to start watching. And I'm not saying we're going to be impacted anytime soon. We're probably going to see more aggressive waves coming through the pattern, but I am not immediately forecasting any named storms rocking through the Windward or Leeward Islands just yet. This is a signal here that we just have to start switching our gaze. We're not only going to be focused on gyre homegrown stuff but now we're going to turn our attention to the greater atlantic especially as we are anticipating more warmth through july and then especially early august for those of you wondering about the dust the dust is always a pivotal factor we'll go ahead and go through the loop first and foremost for the southeast u.s we're looking good 
at least that tropical disturbance, whatever you want to call it, is looking good. We're going to be between dust plumes. You can see right in through there over the state of Florida. We were a little hazy, kind of socked in with some dust over this past weekend. You could see it if you looked straight up, even during the highest portions of the sun in the afternoon hours. You can plain as day kind of get a glimpse of the dust hanging out, creating just a touch of haze, not as crystal clear blue skies before the thunderstorms rolled in. And then if you look out across the MDR after you switch the t attention from close to home back out there, if you notice, as we get closer to July 10th, this doesn't quite go out as far as what our models are suggesting. Where it is, we could see some healthier waves coming off of Africa. But where it is they are generally propagating stays to the immediate south of where some of our more heftier layers of Saharan dust and that heat in the upper atmosphere could be coming off of Africa. So it'll be very interesting to see exactly where these waves meander. If you go back to the Euro here, notice exactly where I have the lines drawn. It's going to stay to the south of where our primary plumes of that Saharan air layer will be. This is very reminiscent of what Beryl did and pulled off record-setting development last hurricane season. And I'm going to pull my face back up and let you know that's not what I'm anticipating, okay? We're not going record-setting major hurricanes. I'm just thinking we're starting to transition to that point in the season where we could have some MDR development. It's to be expected. We're getting past the beginning of the season. We're already due through the first month. So it goes without saying, it's going to start to show itself a little bit more routinely. Here's a look at the UK model. I only brought up the UK because it's one of our models, one of our slightly more reliable models that's showing that twin low pressure development. The Canadian model showing it, the icons kind of showing it, a couple of the previous runs of the Euro were showing it as well. The UK model has been kind of uptrending though in the Gulf. There goes our first little feature. This is not tropical by any means. This is just a piece of the front and some of that upper low trying to translate down as it continues to slow slowly propagate off towards the west like I showed you on the infrared but then here comes the front right there and first you can kind of see that beginning of the first spin right there beginning to really deepen try to take on at least a tropical depression if not again a PTC designation before moving towards the west and up towards the southern base of Mississippi and Alabama and if I change the location here go to the southwest Atlantic Look at that. You get another low pressure here as you go through time right there. See that? You get like a double barrel low setup right there, and that looks a little more classifiable than the first one. So it's very interesting to see what happens. If this were to occur and we get the twin lows to set up, if they're far enough apart, maybe there's a fighting chance that we get two individual weak storm systems. But generally, that's not how it works. So we'll have to wait and see. There's a number of different fail modes and possibilities for this to go wrong. The Korean model is only showing a singular low pressure on the west side of Florida. Same thing with the icon, albeit it does show individual weak, small-scale vortices rotating around the tail of that cold front. Same thing with the Euro. The GFS has kind of hinted towards it. The Canadian model definitely showing the two low solution, one forming up closer to North Carolina, south of Cape Hatteras, the other off our Florida West Coast. Then real quick, before I take up too much more of your time, this is a look at the long-range Euro probabilities. If you start off right at the very beginning, notice that very prominent signal off the southeast coast of what we're tracking right now. You go through the 7th through the 14th, not quite there yet, Still seeing some of that lingering signal thanks to cold fronts trying to break down our negative PNA, but then as you get past the halfway mark of July, that's the timetable, past the 14th, the 15th from there, that is when I truly think it's game on for the Atlantic. There you go. You can see that rapid uptick in our signals out there for the main development region right in through the Lesser Antilles into the Eastern Greater Antilles. And then it only continues from there as you get deeper into the month of July. Some of this is just basic climatology being signaled by the model. We're going to see the ITCZ lift up. The easterly jet and the African monsoon is going to become a bit stronger, more potent. So we're going to have more waves meandering through the flow. But on the same token, as I showed you with our long-range ensembles and the operational models even picking up on development this far out, 
it's definitely something we want to watch very closely. The CFS here also shows the same thing. The CFS has been on the ball with hinting at a fairly active second half of July. I'll start the loop right at about the 15th and notice immediately once that high pressure in the Atlantic breaks down, you go further from there towards the back half of the month and you start to see more consistent development which is why, again, I want to emphasize that if you haven't been paying attention in the Caribbean, wherever it is you are, obviously the Lesser Antilles, as we talked about last hurricane season, you all are the front lines. It looks like we're going to have as strong of an NAO, Atlantic high pressure, as we saw last hurricane season. So whether we have some close grazes like with Ernesto last year or we have disorganized tropical waves, disturbances, invest areas, Hopefully not any named storms, but it does look like named storms are on the table as we go deeper into July. I need my Lesser Antilles watching closely. Please check back with us. Keep an eye out. From there, I'm not talking the United States just yet or anybody as far west as Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, the Bahamas, because if you notice here on the GFS, we still have a fairly aggressive tut that is going to stay out there across the Western Atlantic. You can see it right in through here. It's fairly sloppy, fairly disorganized, but there's your tropical upper tropospheric trough, which once we move over to the next overlay, you can see it keeps the wind shear just cranking through the Caribbean right there. You can take a look. You switch over to your anomalies here for the bulk shear, and we might get some development in the MDR, but remember Brett Cindy from 2023, some of our earlier waves in 2024, some of the attempts we had during both of those hurricane seasons could be a fairly similar song in dance. You see the same thing on the GFS ensemble. The Euro isn't quite out just yet when I'm shooting this, but there you have it. It looks like the Atlantic itself is going to become far more optimal out there. Definitely. But then it's going to be a question of will these features make it far enough west to really be a huge detriment to many of us outside of just the Lesser Antilles. That's why I want to emphasize Leeward and Windward Islands, you got to start paying attention. We got to start waking up. It was a quiet June. We didn't have really anything out there. Maybe some rain showers every now and again. But now it is almost time to get your game faces on. And you can count on the Weather Center to bring you the earliest expected arrival for these tropical features, whatever they may be, here on YouTube and other social media platforms. I'm going to be working, again, as round the clock as I can possibly with everything that I have going on, both with News 6 my personal stuff, the Navy, etc. So with that being said, we'll wrap up. Thank you so much if you're still here watching. I appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. Thank you for all your gratuitous support. It's been fantastic building this community, not only over the last few hurricane seasons, but we're already starting to get some wins here during the 2025 season, and I'm humbly thankful that I was blessed with the skill to bring you all this type of information on a regular basis, especially when it matters most. And you can count on me here in the Weather Center, whether I'm at News 6 or here at home base or wherever the military decides to send me because I have a lot going on in that facet as well. I will be right here to watch your back as we continue through the 2025 season. One month is officially down. We're still tracking some things out there, but nothing menacing on the immediate horizon. We just have got to start getting that game plan finalized. If you haven't done so because of the lull, I hope that you are now dialing things in because only a matter of time. Like I've been saying, we just got to give it a little time. Give that like button a little nudge, please. Once again, kindly consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so. If you're brand new to the channel, it would sincerely mean a lot, and it keeps inspiring me to get better and better at what I do every day. Drop a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know where you're watching from if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and we'll see you again soon. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.